right, YouTube, what's up? So we are starring another ecological landscape this morning, and today we are in Longwood, just north of Apopka, in that Orlando area. And my message for you today is, don't be a grass hole. So this property is going from a pretty much typical yard of standard landscape with lots of grass, which is high maintenance, lots of work to take care of, really hard to grow down here in Florida without chemicals, to more of an ecological landscape, more of a zeroscape, less grass, more paths, more beds, more beneficials, um, you know, more, more things to bring in predatory insects, obviously more edibles, so that's what we do. Really cool edible landscape going in here. Matt has that design printed out. When he gets here, we'll kind of show you the overall scope. Um, there is a couple of edibles here. And there's a couple of guavas, there's a mango, there's a couple of citrus trees, there's a couple of avocados. And my friend and client Lynn lives here. We've been working with Lynn now for a few months. We did the design and now we're actually implementing it. We're really still in the running through the irrigation, ripping out the grass, taking out that existing landscape stage, making a big mess. Matt's over there now running the tractor, getting probably that last load of sod out of here. We've hurled out, I don't know, 30 yards of debris, giving away a lot of plants that came out of the ground. We've hauled out probably 20 yards of sod so far. I've got another 20 yards to go. And you can see this place is uh, all of a sudden really dried up. Definitely, uh, a little bit dustier now. That's what happens when that sod comes out of the ground. Let me tell you guys too, I just got a new sod cutter. Total game changer. Same brand I used to have, just a new one, hydrostatic. And uh, it's unbelievable, it's a Cadillac. We knocked out like a 4,000 square foot of sod in like two hours flat, cutting it. Now we're in the cleanup stage. So for this septic tank area, instead of having grass, something that needs to be cut all the time, we're putting that nitrogen fixing lawn alternative with the Sunshine Mimosa, Mimosa Strigolosa, and it has beautiful you know, purple flowers on it, no thorns like the regular mimosa you're used to. So this is a, you know, more of a soft, still sensitive plant, native to Florida, makes a great, you know, nitrogen fixing lawn alternative, like I said. All right guys, day four, quick little rundown where we're at with the project. We've got all the grass ripped out. We've got all the uh, existing landscape ripped out. We're retrofitting the irrigation. And by retrofitting the irrigation, I mean we're changing that um, standard irrigation from a overhead spray rotors to a more water savvy micro irrigation and drip irrigation in most all cases. So, you know, standard irrigation here in Florida is typically done all with pop-ups and rotors and set up for grass, not set up for plants. You know, typically speaking, a lot of these plants we're installing don't want overhead irrigation. They don't want that water on their leaves. They want that water right in the root zone. So, you know, that's going to cut down on the actual amount of water we need, make things a little bit more water savvy around here. So you can see Got all the main landscape out. Asiatic Jasmine is staying. We've got kind of a huge staging area. We've taken over the front of the client's house. Thank you, Lynn, for letting us do so. Started to take some of the main trees. This is all gonna be landscape, and this was, was originally grass when we got here. You could see there's some of the pop-ups that were starting to cap along the driveway. And we're gonna have a four-foot shell path wrapping here around the house. So these are all trees. I think that one's gonna be a persimmon. We're gonna have some gall and gall hiding this pool pump. Um, Simpson stopper over here along the cage. There's actually going to be a big trellis coming down the side of the yard right here. And uh, you know, this is going to have passion fruit on it. And something I'll point out like when I say water savvy and irrigation, since we've been here, this neighbor waters twice a day. Like I'm ready to call the water police. And unfortunately, because they're drawing off a lake, I don't think they can do anything. Like talk about wasting water, talk about not knowing when to water. Here's a pro tip for you never ever water during the day. Um, every time I've seen this guy water, it's a peak of heat, you know, yes, the lawn's looking dry, yes, the lawn's looking sad. No, it's not the right time to water it. You're actually doing more damage than you're doing good. Absolutely kills me to see that. We actually ended up putting a bucket over one of the sprinkler heads because it was flooding the side of the house. He had the zone on for like three hours. Ugh, drives me nuts, we're not gonna go there. 
you know, the client just put a beach in along the back. It's getting a lot of fruit trees. She has some uh, raccoon issues here in the backyard. So they have been trapping and relocating to a local Okoe park. They're not getting killed, don't worry. Um, they're actually going back and they're meeting up with their family members and friends. So there's that beach area down along the back. That's gonna be the artificial turf area. You can see we put about 16,000 pounds of paver base down on that yesterday and we put that in for the artificial turf guys so they're not coming in here and trampling over our stuff. We're not actually putting that turf down. We're just getting that out of the way. So all I know, you know, the only thing they're dragging back in here is a roll of grass. You know, I'm kind of just taking that extra step because I know how other people are. Ryan, getting that heavy duty weed mat down and I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, the type of weed mat you use is highly important. I'm gonna put a link in the description down below. Um, we got some quotes on this beach. Lynn had mentioned the idea of wanting a beach. If you can kind of see here around the pond, there's actually other beaches. And uh, you know, she reached out to one of these local companies, had them do this beach before we got in here. They claimed to have been using a high quality weed mat. And when I got here, I had to laugh. Um, these guys were a joke. I mean, an absolute joke. If you guys are watching this, you don't even belong to be in business. I mean, I'm just gonna tell you straight up, there was nine sprinkler heads buried underneath this beach with the cheap weed mat. Like, that's not how you do business. This is why we end up doing a lot of these things that maybe aren't 100% specific to what we do, but it's because everybody else out there stinks at doing it. So, you know, unfortunately, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Putting a beach in isn't my thing. I probably would have put this in if I knew these guys were gonna do it like that. That's just how we roll. So, you could see, I mean, whole, whole you know these are sprinkler heads that were completely buried underneath this uh this beach area you could see it's already covered in weeds if they would have used the proper weed mat instead of this cheap flimsy, flimsy cloth stuff we wouldn't be having these issues i mean there's already holes in this if you see i mean that's just it's pathetic i can see through it um you know the stuff we're using i've had that stuff down in the nursery four or five years and it still looks good um you know high quality so here's another one of those sprinkler heads that the uh, the noobs buried. <laughs> and over here in this area, there was six sprinkler heads. So one right here. I mean, we're talking underneath the weed mat, underneath the sand. Um, what a mess. You know, do stuff right the first time. It doesn't need to be redone. You know, just a, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like to say that these guys didn't notice those sprinkler heads is BS. They noticed it, they knew exactly what they're doing and companies like that aren't gonna be around forever because of the type of work they do. Absolute joke, gives a bad name to the landscape industry. So this yard on this side of the house has been an absolute mess, absolute challenge. You know, things that we don't know when we're getting here. Irrigation lines two inches below the ground, um, wires for irrigation timers an inch below the ground, drain lines an inch below the ground. Like we hit things with the sod cutter I've never hit before here. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. So we had some unexpected delays. We had to fix some drain line yesterday. We had to rewire some valves for irrigation. You know, those are obstacles when I hit them. It's like hitting a big speed bump in the road. Definitely kind of throws us off uh, tilt a little bit, but you know, we got back on track and we're flowing here again. Um, we did leave a couple of the standard Robolinis up against the back of the house. You could see, I mean, this is what we've been dealing with. That's some of the pipe that was at surface. Here's some more of the pipe that was at surface. You know, these valves are literally all over the yard. Like no exposed boxes up at the top. They're just kind of like laying everywhere out throughout. And if you guys know anything about irrigation, all those valves should be in one area, maybe two areas. So four and four, five and four. You know, we've got eight zones here and I've got two, 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 one, one. Got valves everywhere, no map them where they were. So this was a little bit challenging to say the least. Or all the poles are marking where the main species fruit trees are going to go and that shell path is actually connecting right here to this paver path and then over here there'll be a little bit of a shell landing kind of seating area and then beyond this meeting up to the jasmine is actually going to end up being a uh, a mimosa kind of sustainable lawn alternative ground cover in this area i am kind of on a, uh, a drainage field for the septic that gets pumped out into the front yard so nothing deep rooted in this area whatsoever All right, guys, day five, we're back here on this Longwood project. Brought another trailer load of plants. Got a thousand feet of that aluminum edging. Got a lot of plants going in the ground today. I think you're gonna notice some big changes here by the end of the day. So we've got three days left after this. 
we're hoping to get this wrapped up by Thursday. We've got seven guys on site today. You can see we're working on that eastern property line. We're gonna be putting an edge in to stop the neighbor's yard from coming in. And Ian's over here starting to get some of those trees in the ground. As you can see, we brought some olives, some catli guavas and stuff with us today. Ryan's over here starting at the bottom. Good morning. Getting that edging in. Oh, hey, good morning, dude. How you doing? Another day, brother. What's growing on? What's growing on? So uh, we got weed mat down and mulch on this playground area and really exciting. Y'all see that big trellis over here behind me. The handyman came this weekend and he's putting a passion fruit tunnel in. This is something we had kind of scoped out in the design. He started to build it. So as the homeowner's walking down to the dock to enjoy your morning coffee or watch the sunset, you know, there'll be kind of passion fruit hanging over your head, right? Pretty epic. Whew. All right, guys, day six, lots of epic changes. Yesterday, we got a ton of plants in the ground. We got a bunch of that metal edging in, started top dressing with compost. So as you can see, coming into the right side of the house, we've gotten a lot of the main fruit trees in. Those avocados were existing. We added a mango, a mulberry, a longan, some vitex, um, standard firebush towards the back, perennial peanut, a lot of that uh, coreopsis tick seed kind of along the front here. Got a lot of the area kind of staged out, so not much left in our plant staging area though. That Michaela Alba went to the center island yesterday. Got some mimosa over here. Obviously our biochar, we always got that. So in front of the house here where we had crepe myrtles, now we have olives, we have catli guava, we have fioja, we've got galongo, we've got muley grass, so that have a beautiful pink flower on it when it flowers. Um, one or two dwarf firebush in there, the jasmine will till back in that area acting as a good ground cover, not quite a nitrogen fixing ground cover, but it will work. Um, the guava was here. This is a lawn alternative. So this area is actually gonna end up being a sunshine mimosa, mimosa strigolosa. That's a nitrogen fixing native ground cover without thorns. You can walk on that. So we put some weed mat down in that area with hopes that that weed mat would help to keep those weeds in check while the ground cover establishes. Once the ground cover gets strong enough, it should hopefully, you know, outcompete the weeds and kind of take over this entire area. It'd be covered in a mat of mimosa with those beautiful pink flowers. So got some taro going in. We've got monstera going in. This is going to be a seating area. That'll be shell. It kind of lines right up with the side door. So you come out of the side of the house, you walk out into the seating area. And then the next path is actually going in over here on this side. Plants in the ground. Good morning. Right, coming down that side of the house where we widened up that hedge and gave a lot more space. We've got Japota Cabas. We even got some stone fruits in here. We have some of the low chill varieties of peaches. We've got another mango. We've got another peach. We've got some uh, necklace pot nitrogen fixers. We've got a star fruit. This is a really wind protected area. Um, kind of up against the house on this side, we've got some pineapples, edible leaf hibiscus, cranberry hibiscus, turmeric kind of coming all the way down. Looks like we got another dwarf mulberry in here. Another one of those necklace pods. Uh, I see a caliandra. As you can see, a little seating spot here of a couple pineapples, papaya, monstera, lemongrass. Not sure, we're probably just gonna end up pruning out this olive. And everything is really coming together over here. Got that metal edging in yesterday. Looks like we got some of those edible candle lilies over here. Edible candle lily over there. Some more of those bananas. And then coming down the side of the house here, we've got some tall, skinny galangal hiding the pool pump, edging. You can see we're really close to the neighbor's property line. The idea here is that that trellis will come all the way down this really skinny spot. So we'll continue this trellis all the way to right here per se. And we'll have dragon fruits and passion fruits and other trellising species kind of coming down the side here, whatever the client decides. Here's a, uh, here's a banana pit. Looks like we got some mealy grass, some of the uh, black grafted Suriname cherries. Over here on this side, another grafted loquat, existing avocado. This is all that African potato mint. Makes a really, really beautiful ground cover. Also makes a little potato underneath the ground. I'm gonna get you guys some action with that new toy. We don't quite have it out yet. It's before 8 a.m. Show you what we're playing with here. I think you're gonna freak out.
Whoa, there's the new toy I've been telling you about. So game changer. They've actually done studies with this machine. And by the end of the day, the employees are 25% more efficient. And I can tell you, we're pretty efficient, but something like this is even gonna make us more efficient. So, you know, we have to put 20 yards of crushed shell down here. That's 40,000 pounds of material, putting 85 yards of mulch in here. Now that's probably another, I don't even know, 40,000 pounds of material. Obviously mulch is a lot lighter. It's gonna be a game changer for us. So really, really awesome, the design process. I love how a lot of the bolts are interchangeable. This thing has three cables on it. Every cable is actually exactly the same. So one breaks, you know, they're pretty interchangeable. I actually have a flatbed that goes on there with some forks. I mean, this thing's gonna be a game changer for moving materials around this place. Y'all ready to see this thing work? Hold tight. Right now we got about 800 pounds of compost in there. Did I mention this thing's four wheel drive and go, we'll go through the beach or mud? Oh, 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 okay. All right, I would guess over a half a yard of compost right there. All right, appropriate technology, tools for the job. You guys know I'm all about new toys, new tools, saving us money, making our jobs a little easier. Yeah, that's how we roll. So, muck truck, great job putting that thing together. I'm really impressed. That thing seems super heavy duty. Um, I think they're like the leader in the gas powered wheelbarrow here in the industry. Really doing some amazing stuff. They actually got a distributor here on the East Coast. I should have a link for you guys to maybe even get a discount on these things. I'll put it in the description down below. Check out Muck Truck, pretty epic stuff. Make sure you tell them Green Dream sent you. We're at day seven here, this is Wednesday. I'll tell you guys right now, we moved about 45 yards of mulch yesterday and we couldn't have done it without this new wheelbarrow. Um, definitely a huge game changer in moving the amount of material we did. We just dumped another 15 yard load this morning. Matt's on his way back to go get another load. I expect to see about another two loads go down today. So we'll probably be in the range of about 105 yards of mulch. We've got a lot of this place laid out yesterday, a lot of this place planted. Um, we have saved a lot of little one gallon material. We'll come back and plant that through the mulch. And you know, this is some primo mulch. I really lucked out here. Um, you know, shout out to the local tree service. I started calling a couple of guys in the area. They said I could come to their yard. Actually, nobody was there to load. They let me use their machine. They are selling it to me, but they're selling it to me for a very reasonable rate, much cheaper than I could buy a cypress or pine bark. And it's obviously a much better material. Oh, it's going down. Oh, hey, what are you doing? Got grease? Got grease? All right, it's all about the grease, dude. Yeah, maintenance is key. We obviously love this equipment. You know, having a small machine that's just working off the driveway, filling the wheelbarrows. Any way we can make these guys' jobs a little bit easier, move through these jobs a little quicker, we're gonna take that extra step. So, you know, appropriate technology, tools for the job. I do believe in the tool that you're gonna use all the time that saves your back, that makes life easier. You know, that, that tractor's like having 10 men. That new wheelbarrow is like having five really hardworking dudes out here. So, it's a game changer. All right, guys, day eight on the Longwood transformation. And this morning, we're expecting about 40,000 pounds of crushed shell. So all of those paths going around the house are getting a three to four inch base of shell. That seating area should be here at any moment. As you notice, we're starting to put down some of that black mat just along the edge to protect that shell from getting into the mulch so we don't have a big mess to clean up. Hopefully make our lives a little easier. We got a lot of the edging in and we still got a bunch of one gallon plants to get in the ground. A lot of mimosa, a lot of peanuts still going in. Got some black eyed Susan, some salvia, some galardias left. You can see we got the black mat down on the paths. Just started to get those cattle panels attached to the side of it. 
And looking down the side of the house here, we got this edging in. The guys are just finishing up the black mat. So expecting a delivery here any minute. That's gonna be the fun part of the day. I gotta go get some more compost for implementing all of those one gallon plants. Anytime we're going back and we're putting those plants into a, a six inch base of mulch or something like that, definitely need to be adding, you know, one gallon, two gallon of compost to each plant. So it, was, it is a little bit of a more work per se, but it's also a lot more work if we were to plant all of those one gallons and try to mulch around them. It's coming down to the final day here on this Longwood project and it's always the meticulous stuff, the detail, um, the cleanup, the final kind of steps that take the longest it seems. You know, the clean out, the rip out's always a lot of fun, the layout's always a lot of fun, but when it gets to this last day or two, it's still fun, but it's definitely time consuming and it seems like you're never gonna get out of here. So we're kind of on those last details of making sure all the irrigation is in check making sure everything just looks good. You know, we put a lot of shell down here. Um, also planting a lot of those one gallons today that it was much tougher to try to go around with mulch. So we're putting those into the mulch. I've talked about that a lot in some of my other videos. Um, just setting out the ant stations. Just got the whole old driveway finally cleared off so the homeowner has the front of her house back. You can see all the metal edging is in, all of the shell is down. That brick is actually marking access to um, something to do with the septic. So we're gonna have that actually buried underneath the mulch. And the last of the salvias are going in down this side. So you see some pots are still kind of laying here on the ground. That'll be the final, final finishing touches. This will end up filling in really nicely with some dune sunflower around the palm and under the queen palms over there. So that'll be a big patch. You know, those, those flowers go right on the beach. That's why they call them dune sunflower. So quite nice coming down here in the morning, enjoying sunrise and sunset in your backyard. We've actually used those jet skis. I was gonna get you guys some footage, but I just thought that would be totally obnoxious. So I skipped that, but I was on the jet skis one night. Thank you, Lynn, for letting us have fun with this one. So we are still waiting on the uh, artificial turf guys. First it was Wednesday, then it was Friday, now it is Saturday, now they're asking for Monday. I don't know what we're gonna do about that. Gonna have to come back for the follow up with the drone footage. Um, do have a couple of keyholes going on here back behind the pool area. This time of year, like I said, there's not a lot you can grow in Florida for annual vegetables. Really just okra, eggplant, um, and some peppers going in those beds for right now. There's some basils in there also. Really excited about this new plant here in front of the uh, Robolinis. That's a variegated Simpson stopper. Really cool looking. So this job looks pretty awesome. It's about all I'm gonna do here for you guys today. I'm gonna be back probably Monday, Tuesday to get you that final drone footage to go around with the camera one more time. Hope you guys enjoyed this epic little project. All right, YouTube, what's up? We are back in Longwood and it's about five to six days since we finished this install. And we're unfortunately waiting on some different aspects to get wrapped up like the artificial turf. And I know I kind of started getting into this in my last video, but I want to make sure I bring this point back up to you guys again. Like, you know, we are finishers. You know, we start jobs and we finish them. There's a lot of people that can, anybody can get out there and start something to actually finish it is by far the hardest part of the equation. Um, those last couple of days, those finishing de details, it's like the trim on the house. Now, anybody can paint a house, but until you finish the trim and the windows, it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna look right. So, you know, we always seem to flow really, really, really good up until like that last day or two, and it seems like you're never gonna get done. And that finishing aspect, that all I can say is don't give up. Try hard, push hard, because once you finish, that's when you actually start to get the satisfaction of the install being done. And you know, it's only been six days since we were, you know, wrapped up this install. Today is Wednesday. We actually pulled out of here last Friday at like 7 p.m. Um, I already have banana pups. I've already got new leaves. We've already got new growth on probably half the stuff we installed here. The grass is done in the backyard. I'm gonna shut up. You guys ready to look around? Let's check this place out.
All right, who's ready to check out this backyard? Let's go. So this is gonna be a Sunshine Mimosa grass alternative area. Um, lots of tropical sage back in here, lots of uh, taro, uh, pineapples, pagoda flowers, monstera, nice little shell seating area. So, you know, I wanna come into my backyard. You know, we wanna, we wanna enjoy our new landscape. We could sit here in the chair and listen to the birds and feel the breeze and look down at the pond and kind of be in a dappled light type situation. I mean, you know, these things, we didn't even finish the job and Lynn, the homeowner, who's awesome, I'll point out, um, already had these chairs sitting over here. So I'm sure she's been over here taking advantage of the space. Dude, what do you think? I mean, it's been five days since we installed. I'm already seeing some new growth. Uh, yeah, some of the ground covers have doubled in size. We're seeing flowers on, we're seeing fruit set on some of these fruits already. I didn't even know they were flowering. They're already setting <laughs> fruit. This is, this is the time. If you're going to start a food forest, right? Right when the rains start, that's when, that's when to be out here planting. That's what I'm doing at my place. And we're getting lucky. It's starting early this year too. Yeah, rains have started in May. That's not typical. Usually we have to wait till June for our summertime rains. We're getting them a little earlier this year where this is typically a dry season. Yeah, there's a lot less stress for us having put things in the ground. We don't have to worry so much about the irrigation being perfect. Obviously, when the Green Dream puts it out, it's going to be perfect anyway, but it helps to have that rainfall. The natural water coming in definitely helps get things going right away. Um, it's quite beautiful. Actually, there's a big dead tree up in this wood line behind me and every morning when we got here, the hawk would be up in the tree. It's a snag. It attracts different species. Really cool. This mango was already here. Um, Caliandras and jackfruit and Turks cap hibiscus and sweet almond and lots of different varieties of salvia. This is a red variety of the Japotacaba fruits much faster. This banana literally pushed this new leaf since we installed it. Like within five days. Um, a lot of these plants have new leaves, new flowers. Um, I don't know if it's just the daily water. I don't know if it's finally getting out of the pots, but we see this all the time. The plants don't want to be in the pots. They're much happier in the ground. Salvia's all the way along this edge and something I want to show you guys. We've been using these green ant stations. Um, I've got about 22 of those in at the farm. Had some major ant problems this year. I've actually kind of met like an ant pro, we'll say who's been teaching me about all the different species, how to control them, how to control them organically. I've had actually great success with that. I'll make a video with that one on its own. I have a link for you guys so you can actually find those on Amazon, um, but it's an all natural solution. Works great. Carambola tree. On this side, we actually have some stone fruits. So there's a couple of peaches. There's a new mango. There's this necklace pod. That's a native nitrogen fixer. Lots of sunshine mimosa in here. Um, on this side, we've got cranberry hibiscus and pineapples and turmeric. Uh, Black-eyed Susan, another banana, lots of different varieties of turmeric. We've got lots of edible leaf hibiscus in here, papaya at the end. And these bananas were literally one banana just a couple days ago, guys. Like literally one, two, three, every one of those has a pup, you know. So I like to look at these bananas that we're installing as a seed. And I say that because they're tissue cultures. They're coming through a production commercial company. This is how they actually grow and spread the bananas. Ideally, I actually prefer a pup. And by a pup, I mean a baby or an eho from that actual banana clump. These tissue cultures, they're much cheaper. They're much easier for large scale commercial production, but it's not a really strong banana like you're gonna get out of the pup. So we look at that as a seed, that next banana that comes up is actually gonna be a lot stronger. That's gonna be that long-term banana that'll end up putting off of the, uh, a rack here maybe in six months, you know, who knows? Those are a couple of different varieties. I see Seminole, I see Pinsang Ceylon and Huamoa, so that one of those is actually a plantain style banana. Um, Passion fruit tunnel is not done yet. We actually installed some coral honeysuckle, um, and passion fruits on either end. So the coral honeysuckle, the idea is it'll fill out the center of the panel where the passion fruit tends to go to the top. It won't really fill much here. There'll be one vine. So to get the complete fill in effect, we put the coral honeysuckle in there to fill in the, the lower part. I still cannot believe the bananas here. Canna lilies, this is an edible flower variety, edible root variety of canna lily. We prune that existing olive. There's another one of those bait uh, ant stations I was telling y'all about. We've got a different variety of firebush over here. So this is the Hemelia Patton's compacta variety, not the true standard. It's another one that sold the um, native nurseries, has a little bit more of a red leaf to it, you could say. Down here by the water, we've installed some elderberry, a couple of wax myrtle up towards the top. There's also some more canna here by the bottom of the deck. These are already flowering, weren't flowering when we installed them.
and you guys will see that entire bed um, we've got that artificial turf area in so it looks really cool obviously you know it's plastic I don't want to hear the crap down in the comments below um, you know there's 700 square foot of artificial turf that went in here um, client wanted some type of grass it was regular grass with the irrigation that requires you know water and chemicals or it was artificial turf grass doesn't want to grow in Florida so I don't have a problem I'm not the the quite the purest you know in, in that way I mean I, I completely get where the homeowners coming from guys you have to understand we're in business you know this is a business this isn't exactly always gonna be purest permaculture this is ecological landscaping we try to take every aspect of permaculture possible and use and apply not everything's gonna you know be pure permaculture so doesn't everything have to be by the books lots of perennial peanut in here you can see those yellow flowers um, this bed right here has seminal pumpkin and sweet potato slips and the idea here is once the seminal pumpkin gets fungusy and we get into rainy season the sweet potatoes will obviously take over that bed and fill in as a long-term ground cover you got the edible leaves you got the edible roots doesn't get any better than that up here by the back door underneath the existing robo lady palms we've got some perennial peanut a row of katuk in the shaded area by the screen some lemongrass more perennial peanut native gallardia and then in these pots we've put some of the mints so we've got some different varieties of mint in each pot here this way they're not going to spread and kind of take over that garden area i mean how cool is this so yeah i'm on the artificial turf um really nice on the feet you know growing soft grass in florida it, it can't do that um, most of our grasses that grow here saint augustine floritam bahia they're all itchy they're all sharp they're not nice on the feet so you know we do have a really cool soft surface here um, you know maybe it gets a little bit hotter in the summertime it's not like we did the whole yard in artificial turf um, no big deal up here by the back door we've got more of the gladia some black eyed susan up towards the back we've got two little tiny keyhole gardens here and right now those are just holding some okra some different eggplants some different basils um, some different peppers and right now is not the time of year in Florida to be growing annual vegetables it's actually probably the worst time of year to try to grow annual vegetables that's why we're so focused on perennial vegetables fruit trees because nine months out of the year those are the things that are really easy to grow down here if you want to grow those kales those brassicas those lettuces you really have to do that September through potentially March just depending on the year this was a really hot winter so lots of black-eyed Susan, Gallardia. Really excited about this new variety of Simpson Stopper. This is actually a variegated variety, dwarf. Found that at the native nursery. I was really excited to get a new plant with a different color and texture. We've got the dwarf firebush going up along the back of the screen cage. So here on the right side of the driveway, we've got Vitex and lychee trees. Um, that's a Pakistani mulberry, existing avocado, another existing avocado, and kind of coming in down this path, we've got lots of black grafted Suriname cherries. Over here on this side, we've got a grafted champagne loquat. And here's another one of those bananas. I mean, this, this is literally like mind blowing. Not even one, two. So that's a new pup. That was definitely not there when we installed that single banana. Um, and this is a new pup right next to this damn wall. So, I mean like, literally six days and we have a new pup. That's kind of mind blowing. Here on that left side, we've got some uh, new varieties of figs. We've got the egg fig, LSU purple, and the brown turkey. Got some different blueberries coming down either side right here. These actually had fruit on them when we got them. And, really big trellis area going down the right side of the house that one is also very similar to the one in the backyard where we use the coral honeysuckle we use the passion fruit and we actually planted some beans on that one that are already sprouting that's another thing that happened here really fast we just put those beans here friday you know it's wednesday five days later we have sprouts pretty amazing um tall ginger species here along the pool pump this is the galangal this is just gonna give us a little visual break from the pool pump, stay skinny and calm in this area. And then coming down the side of the pool cage, we've got some more of the Simpson Stopper, the Gallardia. Um, this is kind of all in that zone one area still too. We've got Moringa and a Move Citrus that we actually relocated to that area. And then we got some more of the Coreopsis 
tick seed in this area, beneficial insects, predators. All right guys, so Longwood, Florida. Um, first time doing a job in this area, really impressed with the area. Actually, I find this area to be warmer than where I am located. I'm actually kind of jealous. Um, I've seen mangoes here doing a lot better. I've seen jackfruits here doing a lot better. Um, there's a lot of topography here. I think it's higher on the ridge. There's a lot of ponds here, which also help to make that microclimate. So something going on over here in, in Longwood. I'm seeing lots of live oaks, lots of water. Like I said, just a little bit warmer. I love the area, I love this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. It's ecological landscaping, Longwood, Florida. I hope you guys enjoyed this project as much as we did. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell to stay notified. And most importantly, pounder. <laughs>